He is Nate the Train Landwehr. Loved our first chat. Let's do it again with the man. Hello, Nate. How are you? Good, man. Feeling good. Back home. Everything's Chilling. good. Easy night at the office. Was it easy? In and out. It was, I mean, it felt pretty easy. I mean, I guess compared to the last one, too, though. But it felt pretty easy, man. I just was checking, you know, using my boxing. Boom, check a couple punches. Kick him a little bit, hit him with the head kick, and then took him down, submitted him. What happened here above the uh, the right eye? Man, I think I look, we watched it, man. Mainly it came from a headbutt. So, I mean, other than the headbutt, really I ain't gonna take too much damage. Uh, stitches? You got stitches there? Yeah, two. Okay. Two stitches. Um, so it's all good. No problems there. I mean, it's it, good. it felt like after the last fight, like you kind of put yourself on the map and there was a lot more interest in, in this fight because of what you did and how entertaining it was. Did you feel like, all right, I gotta, I gotta keep this going. Like now, now, now we're on the train, part of the pun, but like, it felt like something was happening here with you. Nah, man, it feels like the train rolling. We got some steam <laughs> UFC posted me walking in with the suit on. I mean, it, it's showing me love, man. All it is to do now is just keep winning, man, and, and get these performance bonuses. How about that suit? I mean, that was something. Where did that come from? Who who put that together for you? Man, that was all me. My wife's like, you really just coming into your own, ain't you? And I'm mm. like, yeah. She's like, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was tremendous. And you're right. They did show you love. Like, you were like a main eventer. Like, they don't show everyone coming into the arena, but they were showing you mad love. Yeah, I know, man. It's because, you know, they know that I'm going to fight, man. I'm going to bring it. If you see Nathan Train on, on the on the court, it might as well say Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> like Nathan Train versus so-and-so underneath Goosebumps. Goosebumps, baby, yeah. I love it. I mean, I give it to Lingo. He was a tough opponent, man. He was game. It just kind of felt easy. And I was taking my time, you know. Let him work. I knew there's no way he's going to be able to keep the pace. I mean, he kind of broke himself. I mean, I didn't have to. I didn't have to press him too hard and hit him with a little quick look, kick to the head, bam, hurt him, took him down, hit him with a quick, pop, 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 sunk the choke in. My coaches were super happy. I'm happy, man. I'm not damaged by any means. So we'll see how quick I can get a turnaround. Uh, a late replacement. Was that a bummer for you? Yeah, man. You know, I was planning on leaving Saturday night, number 15, on on the roster. But, uh, you know, I try not to look at it like that. I try to look. I'm just one step closer to rene renegotiating and getting a better contract. So when I get to the top 15, I'm, it's worth it. You know what I mean? Oh, nice. What do we got? One left? Two left? What do we got? One left. Think about that. One more time negotiate. We had three bonus in a row. I think they're going to have to name me the uh, 50K train. Yeah. Have to fight Dan Ingay for the nickname. But, you know, sometimes they renegotiate before the last one. So this could happen now. What do you think? You you going to you gonna fight the last one out or what? Yeah, I think I'm just going to go ahead and risk it all, man. Oh, shoot. Put all the balls on the table, see if I can get just four in a row that's, that's impressive like that and just go ahead and try to get as much as I can get. But you're not trying to – correct me if I'm wrong. Like, I feel like you're really happy in the UFC. You're not trying to test the, the, the market and go elsewhere or am I wrong? No, nah, man, I'm happy in the UFC. I'm happy with it. They let me get on the mic. I mean, it's giving me shine, man. It might as well just mic me up during the fight. Oh, my God. That would be incredible if they did that. Do you talk That'd a lot cool, during your fights? This? I mean, if I was mic'd up, I'd probably be more inclined to <laughs> put a camera on me. i come up with something clean. <laughs> that is true. By the way, the post-fight interviews are tremendous. Like this one. That You didn't think of that on the spot, right? Like you, you had that prepared? Man, it kind of, I just have a little here's and there. It's kind of like a, I say kind of like a freestyle rapper, but you kind of put it together, kind of uh, instant, kind of like improv, you know, I've got a couple of little, little whales you go to. I got a highlight reel like Evil Knievel. I got swagger like Elvis Presley, and I'll be damned if I ain't handsome. I mean, what? <laughs> I'll what do you be damn, man. Oh. <laughs> what do you think of the that? The internet's going crazy. <laughs> like, I guess. I guess he's damned. I guess he's damned. <laughs> I'm like, we got grown man in here. Like, he ugly. Like, hey, all right. uh, man. Your girlfriend ain't on here saying that shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. That was tremendous. Nah, it's fun, man. I love it. I love everything about what you're doing. It's a lot of fun. By the way, did you, I don't and correct me if we spoke about this last time, but like, did you ever, I feel like you got a little pro wrestling in you. Did you ever study those guys? 
Man, growing up, I think I watched them tremendously. That's one regret that I I should have I should have got my Stone Cold Steve Austin hell yeah while I was down in there in Texas. Oh, man, I missed true. that chance. That's true. Man, I missed that chance bad. Yeah, that's one of my that's one of my little dad. That's one of my uh, damn moments right man, there. That would have been great. The crowd would have popped for that. But even like your delivery and everything is very pro wrestling esque. Like I feel like you yeah, man. I got I think I, I think it helped when I went across seas. Mm. And I uh, had to have a translator, so you just can't be like blah 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 blah. blah. You gotta be like blah blah blah. Let him translate. Blah blah. Yes. There's nothing worse than somebody going on a vent for like a minute, and then the translator like, yeah, he said he felt good. Yeah, that's <laughs> the worst. That is the worst. That is the worst. <laughs> yes. Like, bro, he was talking for three minutes straight. You said six words. Yeah. That's that's not the translation, man. Yeah. By the way, yeah what... so you gotta kind of chop it up like little short chops. Let the crowd get it. I mean. Yeah, my whole career, man, has been leading up to this, man. I'm ready, man. Does it feel? I'm mean, ready for the next step. You've been, uh, you've been a bit of a barnstormer, right? Like you fought all over the world. We talked about that. Does it feel like all the stars are aligning for you now? Like it's finally all coming to fruition for you? Yeah, man. It feels like everything that I want is behind the door, and the door is unlocked. I just gotta open that bitch and walk through it. <laughs> I mean, even that line is tremendous. That is great stuff right there. Who did you watch as a pro wrestling fan? Like, who do, who do, who did you take inspiration? Man, from? you know, I was a Stone Cold Steve Austin fan. You can't deny that The Rock was that guy, yeah. man. You know, all those guys. Uh, Triple H was cold. HBK with the kick to the face. All them old guys. I think I, I think it was the WWF before they changed their name. I was in. We was in. Think about it. If you was growing up in the 90s and you never got choke slammed or power bomb, you wasn't really growing up. No, nah, I agree. I agree 100%. Now, by the way, uh, the suit was was great coming in, but then at the post fight, you went sans shirt underneath. What happened to the shirt? Dude, I don't know, bro. I lost it. They got lost in some. Because you know how they kick us out the locker room now ever since COVID. Oh. So in the transition to that, I just lost the shirt. I was looking for my little turtleneck. I was like, where is it at? I need my turtle, man. <laughs> but actually, it looked pretty damn cool without it. If I'm being, I mean, it felt like you were yeah, feeling I mean, yourself. It worked, it worked for me. Yeah, it definitely worked for me. It didn't look bad, man. I'm happy. I'm just excited, man, to see the next step, man. I keep on doing what I'm doing. And uh, UFC needs stars, man. And I just don't see why I can't be one. I got everything they need. For real. Uh, by the way, did you go check out the Alamo? Yes, man. That brought me inspiration, too, because, you know, you know, uh, David Crockett was from Tennessee, where he marched his ass down there and held it down. So it was like, man, it was wild. And it's a long history of Tennessee boys coming down there to Texas. And like that last little line that I think um, tra maybe Travis had wrote, Victory or Death. I was like, shit, this Victory or Death, bro. Wow, I forgot about the Crockett Tennessee connection. I mean, this was this yeah, was man, made that for shit you. was me and my, me and my coach, uh, Coach Kelvin, my boxing coach. Man, we was just. We went there about two days prior, and it was it was a cool experience. We seen a little; they had a little, like a seventeen minute movie on all the history and whatnot. And yeah, it spoke to me. Oh, that is amazing! I love that. Um, speaking of your coach and, and and your team in Miami, why has it worked out so well for you over there? I think it's just everything at once, you know. I think just the environment. I think it's being alone in isolation. It gets my time. My mind is my best weapon, and it's like I just have time. It's all output. I don't have any other things coming input. Like I'm not a not a husband at the time. I'm not a homeowner at the time. I'm not a gardener. I'm not having to upkeep nothing. I'm not a son. I'm not an uncle. I'm just down there. I'm nature trained for weeks on end, man, and it adds up. Look, that deposits. Keep depositing. Keep depositing. By the time the fight comes, man, I got hella money in the bank as far as like the deposits mentally I put in. You don't get lonely? Oh man, it drives me. It drives me. I'd be like, baby, I'm about to get, I'm, when I get home, I'm bringing the bacon. And it's been ever since I, I think about it, ever since I moved down there, it's 150 grand in bonuses just alone. Mm, that is true. Now, but like, what do you do to pass the time when you're by yourself? I mean, by the time I get, by the time you train for hours a day, then you do the recovery, then you do the stretching, then you do all the other shit, and then you throw in a little bit going to the hard rock gambling. I mean, and, and it's, it, you know, what I mean? then I've, I've noticed myself, I do a lot more reading. Mm. I've been reading, I've uh, been doing that, I've been doing a little bit of journaling, 
the time passes, man. It's a full time job. A lot of people are like, man, it must be nice to go out there one night and make blah blah blah. I'm like, yeah, but by the time you add up all the shit, you ain't been. I mean, I ain't fought in seven months. What most humans can't comprehend, not getting paid weekly or or twice a month. You know what I mean? So it's like you putting it all on a line. It's like, but man, I was made for this shit, man. I'm ready. Like I was telling my uh, coach, I did a uh, a day before the the fight, I did an ice bath. And when I got into that ice water, that ice got colder because I got ice in my veins, baby. <laughs> that is amazing. You go to the Hard Rock? You go to what? The, the Seminole Hard Rock? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I go to the one up there in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. man. What's I, that I like that. Uh, what do you do over there? I mean, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like to play. Uh, I like to play roulette. I'm a rouletteer. Okay. Why is that, why is that your thing? Uh, just something I enjoy, man. It's uh, it's not really talent. You know, you play blackjack. You kind of got to have a little talent. You play poker. You got to have talent. It's just odds. And with with the odds, the way the odds are, it's a little bit more in your favor the more you play. You know what I mean? Yeah, is there, is there? I don't know. I've had luck. I've had luck with it. I've won about ten grand since I've been Jeez. down there. Wow, I thought it was just total luck. Like you just picking random things. You, there are actual odds involved. It's luck, but it's like this. It's luck like this. Think about this. Like if you bet on one single number, it's a thirty-five to one chance, right? So you really have you can lose thirty-four times, and as long as you win on the thirty-fifth time, you're still gonna win, right? Because the odds. So it's like if you put X amount of money on it. You don't have to double up until like 20, 20 hits. You know what I mean? You have twenty plays and double up a little bit, and then another twenty plays. You double up again. You're talking about a hundred plays. You might. You're probably gonna win something. I've lost pretty good too, though. You know what I mean? What's the most you've you've lost in in one shot? One thirty five hundred. Come on. Why are you doing that? You're you're winning all this money now. Why would you go out there and blow it like that? Uh, cause I'm a guy. I got the. I'm addicted, bro. I got the. Oh, I got the all in. Per- Nate Detroit got the all in personality, and it's the competitive. You know, I, that's what all the my buddies be like, bro. Gambling is competitive because when you lose, it's not really the money. It's like, bitch, I can't. I'm gonna get this back. Yeah, I can't go on a loss, man. But usually, I just to try to go up there, keep it easy, win like a hundred, be in and out in like ten minutes, and then ten I'm minutes. Happy with that? You go all the way there for ten minutes? Yeah, yeah right. So it's like a 20 minute drive from where I'm staying. So I drive up there and try to be back all within like an hour, 10 minutes and try to win 100, 200 bucks. That's not bad, man. It's not bad. It's not a bad day's 200 work. 200 bucks for like an hour's worth of work, drive included. Yeah. Is your wife cool with it? Yeah, she's cool with it till I tell her, man, hello, babe. Uh, 3,500. Yeah, she was like, you, you, you told me 500. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> When, when you're yeah, there, you know yeah. When you when you're there, does she ever come visit, or you don't see her for? for yeah, yeah. Sometimes I uh, I'll fly her down to visit me, but mostly, uh, yeah, mostly she she's up here because she's working with the school system and uh, as a teacher, and she's doing good work with there. And then, but it's like, just one of them things to where the sacrifices they pile up too. It's like the mental. Four to two that I build that piles up. That all the sacrifices pile up. It's like, like I tell my guys down there, it's like, dude, I got a nice ass bed at the house. I ain't sleeping in it because this shit is more important to me, man. I could sleep. I could go days and weeks without sleeping in my bed. To, to I only got one shot in this life. You know what I mean? I'm already 34. I can't wait around and let it pass me. You know what I mean? UFC is giving me every shot I could get. They give me the shine. They give me the little post. They give me leeway, man. But I just got to take it. Like I said, that door is unlocked. You just got to be bad enough to open it, walk through it. So where do you sleep when you don't sleep in the bed? I sleep in a little. I sleep on a little shitty ass mattress. Wow. It ain't my nice bed here. I got a nice little uh, Tempur Pedic little Nectar bed. I got yeah. from Nectar, man. Real nice, king size. I got a. It's nice. My home bed is real nice. It's no, it's no comparison. Right. But it's good to be like in that gritty environment. Yeah, man. That's why I tell people, man, I don't need that. When I'm down there, I take cold showers. I don't, don't watch TV. I try to take away all the little conveniences. I don't need those conveniences. I'm trying to become a, I'm trying to become a monster. 
It's like you're in jail. I don't even, yeah, basically, that's what's like it's prison, baby. Oh my gosh! By the way, isolation. The uh, the the people at the school where your 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 wife teaches, do they know what you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They all they all get they all like give a praise and shit. Yeah, that's it's awesome. Cool. But she works with the bad kids. So she works in what is called EBS. It's the emotionally disturbed kids. So it's uh, they all have special needs. So it's kind of like wow. It's, I mean, I take my hat off. They're, they're saints. Those those teachers, teachers just, I think they need to get, I know everybody talks about fighters need to get paid more. Teachers need to get paid more. Yeah. Bless her. Especially, you know, working with, 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 you know, kids who have needs. I was like, see, I told you I'd get you ready for something. Yeah. <laughs> She's been dealing with my bullshit for years. It's like them kids is pieces of cake. <laughs> oh my gosh. You ever go talk to those kids? I mean, I feel like they would listen to you. I mean, you're a tough guy. You yeah, I mean, so I try to sometimes, but you know, I'm a big believer in the, you know, from from a lot, there's going to come a few. And if you could be spoke, I just don't think that like motivational speakers and shit like that, it really, it's like, if you got it in you already to be great, ain't nobody gonna be able to talk you into it. You're gonna have to. It's gonna have to come from within. Mm. That's fair. That's fair. I guess it affects uh, everyone differently. So uh, now you're rolling. You said you're ready to go. Like you'd like to come back relatively soon. Yeah, I'd like to come back soon. But I mean, I got a honey do list the size of Texas out <laughs> to do while I'm back. You know what I mean? I've been away for about ten weeks now. So I'm. A, I have a garden too. I'm trying to get some plants in the ground. Get this yard cleaned up. We've been having these tornadoes and big wind gusts hitting. So it's my yard. Got about two acres that I live on, and it's it piles up. Yeah, yeah. You and you do that all yourself. You don't hire someone to do that. When I'm gone, I hire somebody to do it. When I'm here, I, I kind of love it though. I love taking care of my property. It's therapeutic, I would think. Yeah. And is it hard to come from like 16,000 people, everyone's going, and now you're back Monday, it's quiet. Like, is it hard to come down from that high of Saturday fighting like that? You know, I think, I think about it and my, my, uh, my whole claim is, so you know how some of these guys, you know, they'll do something, they'll try to ride that wave, ride that wave. And my wife always like, you should ride the wave, you should ride the wave. I'd be like, I make waves. I don't ride waves, baby. You know what I mean? That's my claim. I'm making waves. Let them other cats ride them waves. I'm out here making them, baby. Oh, my God. You just got lined for days. You should be a rapper, by the way. I mean, I feel like... I got you bars, could... baby. Yeah. I got bars. I hit you with another one right here. Like, I was talking to my doctor the other day, and he told me if I ever need a heart transplant, we're going to have to get that from a lion. Let's go, baby. Oh, my Let's God. Let's go. Freaking guy. <laughs> You got the dog in you too. You got the lion in you and the dog in you. Sheesh. Uh, wh- dogs, and that's why I was. That's my whole thing about when I'm fighting these guys. Like I don't gotta. I don't gotta be more than what I am, man. If they bring it out of me, they are gonna get it. But like the other night, I didn't have to. I didn't really have to. I didn't have to. I didn't even have to push to the point where I could have did that for. I could have did that pace for ten rounds probably. But he was already wilting, so I was just letting him wilt away. Who's the ideal opponent next, if it was up to you? Man, I just, there's a lot of things happening in the top 15. You got the, um, you got uh, Pierce fighting Mitchell, so we'll see. So, think if Pierce beats Mitchell, that's going to put both of them in the top 15. So, probably everybody's going to move down. Then you got the Barbosa versus uh, Billy Q. Billy Q beats Barbosa. Maybe that puts Barbosa out to 15, or maybe that moves everybody. There's a lot of things happening in the top 15, man. I really like, uh, I think it'd be cool to fight Dan Ege, bro. He's a banger. Uh-huh. But the, who's going to get to 50K? Uh, I've always liked that fight. Um, as far as I would, I think would be really good for the fans. Cardio-wise, I feel like Billy Q got the cardio and, and the dog in him. And that shit would be a probably instant classic. That's why I would like that fight, especially with him. If he beats Barbosa, he's going to be probably 14, maybe 13, depending on how he beats him. And that would be a banger. Um, I really want to have the Webb Mozart fight. Mm, wow. Not a lot of people calling him because out. That's a tough one. We got history back in uh, M1. He was the champ. I was the champ. I went to Ingushetia. That's where he's from. I fought his boy, beat him, took the title. We had some bad blood. We were supposed to fight. He called COVID. So we got history, man. That's a tough one. 
Ain't nobody calling out everywhere. No. I'll call his ass out. I'll fight him. I'll wrestle him. I'll wrestle your motherfucking ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> By the way, could they could they go to Tennessee and, and uh headline with you and sell that joint out? Oh man, that's a dream of mine. British on arena. Let's go. Anybody. Me five rounds, I'm giving anybody trouble. Man. Whip my ass for 10 rounds and don't finish. Uh, whip my ass for 10 minutes and don't finish me. You got to deal with me for them last 15. I love it. I love everything about it. You're very entertaining to watch, to listen to, to talk to. Uh, much respect, my man. Congrats on another big win. Congrats on another bonus. And keep doing what you're doing. It's, uh, it's a breath hey, of fresh air. I'm ready to have promos. I just got to. I ready. I just be like a coach, man. I just gotta win, so I, I could cut these promos. I love the promo need, work, man. I love they the need promo these work. Promos, man. Everyone's too they boring on the mic. Yeah. Yeah. I love it, man. That's Keep what I'm saying. I can't let I can't let them hear my opponents talk. They ain't got nothing cool to say. Nah. I mean, no one's no no one's dropping bars like you are. Like like what you <laughs> gave us on uh, Saturday. Even when you gave us just now, yeah, that, on the spot after you're in a fight, it's not easy. Yeah. No, nah, it's a talent, man. It's a true talent of mine. It's I prepare for that, man. I prepare for the walkout. I prepare for the fight, and I prepare for after the fight. Everybody prepares for the moment, but there's moments prior and there's moments post where you got to be ready for all this. Everything gets a check mark. You got to be ready to arrive at the arena, man, in style. You got to be able to walk away from the arena. You got to be – think about it. With them kids at that, them kids at that arena, they don't know who's a superstar and who ain't a superstar. You got to you got to convince them. All them little kids going home like, damn, they the Trey. Hey, hey. when I grow up, <laughs> you know what I mean. Think about them kids at that last fight, that Onama fight. They're probably gonna tell their grandkids about that shit. Yeah, it's like, man, that's how that's how you that's how you prevail, man. That's how you excel. Well, you're giving people something to remember and talk about, no doubt about it. So keep it up, my friend. Uh, congratulations on the win. Enjoy it. Appreciate it. Have a good one. There he is. Nate Landwehr. <laughs> the goodbye is just like, all right, peace out. I've had enough of you.